All right, so what happens when a substance absorbs energy and that then leads to a change of state? Um, and what happens to the, uh, to the opposite? I mean, what happens when a substance absorbs energy but it does not change state? So <clears throat> the changing of state, of course, refers to the idea between solid, liquid and gas. And we can describe these by different terms. So when a solid is converted into a liquid, we call it the heat of fusion. And I want to use a symbol for that. So I want to say it's delta H. You don't know what delta H is yet, but it's the convention to use these symbols. Delta H fusion. You can also call it Q fusion if you would like because it's the heat absorbed um, during a transition from solid to liquid, so melting. The reason why it's called fusion, fusion is because the process of going from a liquid to a solid, of course, is the fusion of a substance. Um, then we further can define a term called liquid to, well, when we have a change from liquid to vapor, we call it the heat of vaporization. So something like delta H vaporization, or you can call it Q vaporization. Whatever symbols you are comfortable with, are, um, I'm happy that you use. So, what is the important point um, that we need to highlight? And the main thing is that temperature remains constant during a change of state. And temperature increases or decreases, so the only time it can change is when you're in the same state and you're heating or cooling something, like the words imply. If you heat something or you cool something, there must be an associated temperature change. Whereas if there's a change of state, it sort of remains, the temperature remains constant and the only thing that happens is all the molecules absorb enough heat to go into the next state. So graphically it sounds it essentially looks something like this. So we plot on the one axis, we plot temperature. Uh, you can be in Kelvin or whatever temperature unit you're interested in. And on the other axis, we plot heat. So heat um, in joule, kilojoule, whatever unit. Um, remember, this is Q or delta H as I started referring to. And then what we get, so we take a substance all the way from zero Kelvin, so meaning it's solid, solid state, if you want to put it as such. And then we start heating it. So uh, I just don't like that color, so I'm going to start with purple. So we heat it. So it's, it's a solid, and we heat it, we heat it, we heat it, we heat it, until a certain point where the solid then, of course, melts. So once it's melting, it undergoes a phase change. And a phase change, of course, means the temperature remains constant for a while. All the while, heat is being absorbed. So we move from left to right all the way on this graph. Then again, once we have a liquid, the liquid can be heated. So the liquid heats, it heats for a while there. And then once we get the liquid to a point where it wants to vaporized to a gas, of course, there's a change of state, so it means the temperature must remain constant. And then finally, we have where the gas, so now we have a gas, and then the gas can be heated unto a point. So for our purposes, this is where the story sort of stops. So the gas will just be kept on heated until, I don't know, until it completely decomposes, whatever it is composing. Decomposes. So, if we want to give some labels to this graph, so this green part is when we have a gas, and the gas is either or is being heated, or, I mean, if we go from right to left, it means heat is being expended, and hence we have a situation where we have cooling. Cooling. So, it depends on which way we're going, but in that case, we have a gas and we're either heating or cooling it and it moves up and down that diagonal line. Whereas, we're next to it, we said here we have a phase change. We go from liquid to gas 
and we can call this the boiling, the point where it boils, um, or the point where it vaporizes. So, uh, boiling or vaporization. And the phase before that, of course, was the liquid and we heated the liquid or we cooled the liquid depending on which direction we're going. So here we have a liquid which is being heated or cooled. A final straight piece that we have is when we went from a solid to a liquid. So if we go from solid to liquid, this of course is a process known as melting, um, or otherwise known as fusion. So fusion, fusion is the opposite when you go from liquid to solid, but you can call it, maybe just remind yourself that this is what we refer to as the fusion part. And of course, where did we start? We started with a solid being heated. So this purple part is the solid and it is heated. If we go from left to right, or if we go from right to left, it is cooled. Right, so that's the basic idea of a graph such as this. It tells us at which temperatures there's a phase change because then we can see it's a flat section and we know in which cases we're heating a solid, liquid or a gas because those are the diagonal lines. Now, I've mentioned it a couple of times. The graph from left to right, so going in this direction, means energy is being absorbed. So energy absorption. Whereas the opposite direction, I'm running out of colors. Which one? Oh, we can use that one. It's fine because we're on the screen. Um, so in other words, if we go from right to left, energy is being liberated. So we have energy liberation. liberation. Um, <clears throat> so that's the basic points. Um, and those are, of course, what happens when something is heated or cooled. So once you get that un under your belt, so if something changes state, we have a constant temperature. If it doesn't change state, we heat or cool it. So the temperature changes with that. All right, so that's what I wanted to look at here. And the basic idea of what does adding heat to a substance really mean for its temperature.